about the partisan charade House Republicans have made of the impeachment process. The two impeachment articles filed against Secretary Mayorkas are nothing more than an attempt to politicize this solemn constitutional tool to distract from the very real fact that the House Republicans are struggling to govern. The Senate ha only has the power to convict, remove, and disqualify officers whose conduct meets the constitutional standard for impeachment. And listen to that standard very closely, as spelled out in the Constitution. Treason, bribery, or other high crimes and misdemeanors, end quote. Neither article contains that we've been uh, in receipt of from the House of Representatives contains any evidence that Secretary Mayorkas has been guilty of any of those specific elements in the Constitution, or that he has failed in the exercise of his duties. Instead, the articles of impeachment sent to us by the House of Representatives lay out policy disputes through a regurgitation of Republican talking points on immigration. It is simply not a constitutional crime worthy of impeachment for the current president and secretary of Homeland Security to implement immigration policies that are entirely within the limits of the law and the discretion of the executive branch. The article sent to us by the House Republicans claim that the secretary has willfully and systematically refused to comply with the law because he failed to detain every individual who crossed the border. Remember that standard. He failed to detain every individual who crossed the border. The simple fact of the matter is all presidents, Republican and Democrat, would be found guilty under those elements. Existing law does not require the DHS secretary to detain every person who crosses the border. Congress left it to the discretion of each administration to decide how best to use their limited resources to implement immigration policy. The articles also attack the secretary's use of discretion to decide who to arrest and remove from the United States, even though the Supreme Court has routinely upheld these discretionary decisions. I think it is outrageous to allege that Secretary Mayorkas' decisions to reverse Trump policy quote, breach the public trust, close quote. A decision to change a previous administration's position is fundamentally a policy decision, not a matter of trust. If con congressional Republicans were genuinely interested in improving the situation on the border, I've got a suggestion. Why don't we put together a bipartisan group of senators? Why don't we let the Republicans choose their participant in that? And why don't they consider someone like James Lankford Senator from Oklahoma, conservative, highly respected. Why don't they have James Langford meet with at least one other senator, a Democrat, maybe Chris Murphy of Connecticut, and then perhaps Kirsten Sinema, an independent? And why don't the three of them put together a proposal to make changes, significant policy changes in the border, to give the president more authority to stop the crisis that we face? Why don't we call that for consideration on the floor of the Senate? And why don't the Republicans back that? That is exactly what happened. We've been through this exercise. James Langford, and I respect him very much, did what he was asked to do, represent the Republican side of the aisle, move forward with a proposal that's bipartisan. We have to be bipartisan in the Senate. You need 60 votes for anything serious. and We have 51-49 Democratic majority. Bipartisanship was built into this package of compromises. But what happened? Why didn't that become the law of the land? Why didn't that become the change in the border policy that we're all looking for? The reason is one man. His name is Donald Trump. And he came out publicly and said, I'm instructing my followers to kill this bipartisan effort from Senator Langford on the Republican side. And then former President Trump said, and you're going to hear from people that they want to blame me, go ahead and blame me for stopping this effort at border reform. Well, I am blaming him. And now we have this exercise against Mayorkas instead of a constructive bipartisan exercise that Senator Langford, a respected conservative Republican, Senator Murphy, a Democrat, Senator Sinema, an independent, put together and brought to the floor of the Senate. That's how you change the policy, not with some sham process on... on uh, consideration of an impeachment that is not warranted. 
Unfortunately, a va the vast majority of Republicans recently blocked a bipartisan border bill that I just described. Despite repeatedly referring to the border as a crisis, congressional Republicans' opposition was based purely on Donald Trump's insistence that Congress not pass immigration legislation. He wants to use it as a campaign issue in November. He doesn't want a solution, a bipartisan solution, that perhaps Joe Biden would be given some credit for. So he stopped the whole process and stopped the bipartisanship. This partisan hackery is not lost on me or the American people. Instead of doing their job and working to find legislative solutions to complex, challenging problems, too many Republicans have decided that impeachment of a cabinet official for actually doing his job is a better exercise of time. The framers anticipated that partisan politics would result in meritless impeachment efforts like this one and designed the Constitution to withstand the baseless efforts. During the Constitutional Convention, the framers explicitly, explicitly rejected a proposal to include maladministration, they used that word, as an impeachable offense, despite its use in many state constitutions at the time. Second, the division of impeachment power between the House of Representatives and the Senate was meant as a safeguard against the danger of impeachment inevitably becoming politicized. In Federalist 66, Alexander Hamilton wrote that the division of impeachment power between the House and the Senate, quote, guards against the dangers of persecution from the prevalency of a factious spirit in either of those branches. To translate that into 21st century terms, what he's saying is we want to stop them from using impeachment for politics. In order for the Senate to uphold the Constitution and fulfill its impeachment obligations, it must dispose of these baseless impeachment articles <clears throat> that we've received from the House. The Constitution provides, and I quote, the Senate shall have the sole power to try all impeachments and places very limited requirements on how we are to exercise that authority. Chief Justice Rehnquist noted during the impeachment of then President Clinton, quote, the Senate is not simply a jury, it is a court in this case of impeachment. Both the House and Senate have a history of quickly disposing of impeachment investigations and impeachment articles that do not meet the standards of high crime or misdemeanor. This one doesn't. In the 72nd Congress, two impeachment resolutions were offered against President Herbert Hoover. After the reading of the resolution was completed, the House successfully moved by an overwhelming vote to table the impeachment articles. Since 1986, the Senate has considered motions to dismiss <clears throat> brought by either the impeached officer or a senator in six impeachments and has twice dismissed impeachment articles in the past. So to say this has never been done is just not true. We should follow that example. I urge my colleagues to uphold the Constitution and the intentions of the framers and quickly dispose of these unjustifiable articles of impeachment. Madam President, I yield the floor.